Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, just like it says on the hat, and I think you know the rest of it by now. So, welcome to my shack, and uh, we're going to have a little ham shack chat. So, pull up a chair, grab a cup of coffee, turn your rig on and follow along, and let's talk about Ham Radio Deluxe, and specifically, the CW and PSK modes. Let me philosophize a little bit. When you first got your FT891, the only accessory that came with it was the microphone. And this is fine for a lot of people, but not everyone. Your rig is much more capable beyond using the voice modes. Unfortunately, these extra capabilities come with a cost. In this video, I will be using a Signalink external sound card, a Win Keyer, external keyer, and of course the Ham Radio Deluxe program. All of these are an extra cost, but all of them are one time cost. And each of them add a lot to appreciating and enjoying the time you spend with your rig. All in all, I believe it is a fair trade or investment for your hobby. We're going to start by going through the FT891 menu settings for both the CW and PSK modes, or just generally data modes, and we'll continue on to the function settings. I've listed all of these settings for your future reference down in the video description. Any questions, advice, suggestions, or just greetings can always be left in the comment section. Let's get this party started! Uh -huh. We're going to start by hitting a couple general settings that need to be set for everything. Then we're going to go into the menu settings for CW mode. To get in the menu settings, we press and hold the function key. And we're going to go all the way up to menu 2-06, which is our ZN zero in LED which is this flashy, blinky blue light you see over here once in a while popping up. Now we're going to go down to our cat rate, which is 506. We're going to set our cat rate at whatever cat rate you want. I have selected 9600 bits per second. This is the speed that the USB connection in the back talks to the USB connection on your computer. So that's how fast the cat controls are going. Cat tote, I have mine set at 1,000. Default is 10, but you need more than that. Otherwise, you'll start getting errors. Cat RTS, you want to have that disabled. Now we're going to move into our CW settings. And we'll come up here to AGC fast delay. The three AGC delays you see on your screen right now our defaults and it's recommended that you keep them at that when we get to the agc setting in the functions you'll see that we're going to set that to auto and it will select the best agc rate for the mode you're in right now we're in cw so we would be using 300 milliseconds we want to start with menu item 4-01 which adjusts your keyers Keyer type, I have set to Ella Key B. The difference between Ella Key, which is electronic keyer, B, A, and Y, is what happens when you squeeze your paddles together. Keyer dot dash, you want set to normal. CW weight, I have mine set to 3.2. Uh, you can adjust for your own style. Now we're going to move up to menu item 7-1 which is our CW low cut frequency. You want to set this 100 to 150 hertz below your BFO frequency or your side tone frequency. I have my side tone set at 750, so I have my low cut set at 650. The slope, I want a hard slope, so 18 dB per octave is the max. The CW high cut frequency at 703. I have 100 over my beat frequency. Uh, of course, if you decide to have a beat frequency of 600 hertz, you would adjust this probably to 700 hertz. And the same high cut slope that I had on the low 
705 is your CW out level. I have mine set at 50, which is the default. CW break-in type, I have mine set to semi. You can also choose full break-in, but there are mechanical relays that control this inside the rig, and having it at semi, you will put less strain on those, so you won't have to replace them as soon. 709 is CW break-in delay. I have mine set at 200 milliseconds. You can adjust that up if you need to. Next, we're going to come up here to menu item 1201, which is your APF width. APF is your audio peak filter, and you want to keep that at narrow. And finally, we want to come down to 1602, which is your HF power. And you want to have that set as needed to maintain reliable communications. And you can set that from 5 to 100 watts on CW. I have mine set to 50 watts. Now we're going to go take a look at our CW functions. And you get out of here by giving it a single press which takes you back to your main menu. You give it a single press to take you to your functions and continue to press the F key until we get to functions one. Under function one, TNR is your tuner. If you have one, go ahead and engage that. Vox is off. Processing is off. Monitor is adjust for your own comfort level. That will give you a feed. That will play back what your tone, tone going out is. Split is off. IPO, you can turn on if you want. Play between the two and see how it works and get the quietest signal. ATT is useful if you have a very, very busy band and that will give you a 20 dB reduction across your entire bandwidth, which might be helpful. You want your bandwidth set to narrow you want your noise blanker off. You want to make sure that your shift is set to zero hertz, and you do that simply by pressing the multifunction knob, and to close it, you press your multifunction knob again. Width, you want to narrow that down as much as you can. That will get rid of a lot of the side noise. Right now I have mine set to 150 hertz, but you can take it as low as 50 hertz. Notch. You generally want off, but if you do want to use it, say there is an adjacent channel that's talking and you just want to notch them out, bring that up and adjust where you want your notch to be. Press your function key again to get to function 2, and your meter comes up. Note that I put my meter down here on B as well. If I select my meter, I can select ALC, SWR, uh, or power out and uh, just leave it. And because I put it down here, all I have to do is turn my multifunction knob a little bit and I'll leave that on ALC. Scope, uh, you can turn that on if you want. I have found the scope on the 891 to be pretty useless, but we'll talk about that in another video sometime. Here's the AGC I was talking about at the very beginning. And you, what you want to do is select it and then select which one you want to use. And I'm going to use auto so that the radio has to worry about that and I don't. DNR, digital noise reduction. If you need it, go ahead and use it. Play with it a little bit, see if you need it. DNF, digital notch filter. That is also, if you need it, go ahead and play with it. Contour. Again, uh, I would leave that disabled, as well as all of the rest of these. MOX, TXW, MEQ disabled, and QMB if you need it. That is your quick memory bank, so if you want to store a quick memory, you can. Now press the F key one more time, and you'll come up to your CW settings. You can set your speed, however, me using the wind gear means that the, the speed is wherever I set it. Uh, I can turn the speed up and down on my wind gear without affecting that at all. However, if you're plugged directly into the back, then you, you'll want to use that. Zero in, 
Once you found a station to work and you got close, you can pop that zero in key and it'll bring you right on top of that other frequency. APF, automatic peak filter. I like to leave that on and you can see I can adjust that wherever I want. So play with that one a little bit. Find the one that works the best for you. Pitch is your side tone. I have mine set at 750 and that's where I like it. However, if you want to have 800, just adjust it. If you want to have 700 or 600, wherever you want it, you can set it. I leave mine on 750, but that is completely up to you. Keyer. Using the wind keyer, you want to have that turned off. And you want to have your break in on so that when you hit your keyer, you can see you are transmitting. If you're enjoying this so far, why don't you go down right about there, I think, and uh, pop that thumbs up icon. Give me a like. I like you. Do you like me? To get back to your main page, press and hold the function key. Now, right now, we're still on CW mode, and to get to your data mode, you press and hold the band button on top and use your main tuning knob to adjust it to data. Now, to get to the menu settings, you press and hold the function key. Menu settings will come up, and we're going to go all the way to the top. We use the mid delay for data mode. So you want to make sure that your mid delay is set to 700 milliseconds. Moving up to menu group 7 and going to 712, you want your PC keying turned off. We want to come down to menu item 801, set our data mode to others. We want our other display to be 1500 hertz and other shift in 804 to be 1500 hertz. On 805, and I'm just going to bring all four of these up here, 805 you want your low cut frequency. I like having a full 3000 hertz so I set my lower frequency at 100 hertz with an 18 dB per octave slope. On 807 my high cut frequency I set at 3000 hertz with an 18 dB per octave slope on menu item 808. Menu item 809 your data in select needs to be rear 810 you want your PTT select to DACI, D-A-K-Y. 812, you want your data BFO to be upper sideband, USB. You may have to change this to LSB if your software requires it. Most do not. And we're going to come up here all the way to the top to group 16 and go to 1603 HF power. I would recommend you keep that one at 50 or less, but you can raise it as high as 100. From the menu, you want to click once on the function key. Then you want to click it once to bring you into the functions. Click function until you get around to function one. For tuner, if you have one, I'd turn it on. For vox, off, processing off, monitor at your comfort level, Split off, IPO off, ATT off. Narrow or wide, you want to have this one turned off. I'll show you why when we get down to that WDH in a second. Noise blank or off. Shift, you want to ensure that's set at zero. And your width comes up at 3000. You can narrow it from there if you need to, but leave that on 3000. Notch is turned off. Press it again to get to your function. Two. Meter works the same as in CW. Scope. I leave that off, but that's completely up to you. AGC. Again, works the same as the other one, and we have it in auto. You could put it in mid if you wanted to, but no, leave it in auto and let the radio do the work. All the rest. DNR, DNF, Contour, MOX, TXW, MEQ. And QMB, for me, are off. QMB you can turn on if you want to be able to save a frequency. So on the signal link, 
we want to have the TX set about mid-range and you're going to adjust from there. RX set it mid-range and you'll adjust from there. And delay over here you want to have it completely counterclockwise. You can really help spread the word about this video and a lot of my other videos, especially on social media and with your friends and fellow hams in the FT891 community. Please share. Everyone? I get to tell everyone! By the way, when I was attempting to record a CW conversation, the best signal I could find was a station working the WRTC contest. Look it up. It is really fascinating and has some of the best operators in the world. You don't just join this contest. You really have to be one of the best. Now, this clip may be short, but you'll see me doing the main functions. You'll see me using macros. You'll see me reply to a CQ, decode his contest exchange, and give me my contest exchange. It really shows how well CW can work in the hands of good operators. There you have it. I hope to have a QSO with you on PSK sometime in the near future and get you in my log. Maybe we can even get a little bit of keyboard CW going between us. I do thank you for spending the time to take in this video and if you've made it all the way through to the end then please consider subscribing. Did you not read your apprenticeship contract? 73 until the next Hey y'all, and thanks for dropping in for a Ham Shack chat. As always, I'm at your service. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out.